Hi, everyone. I'm Contessa Brewer. We are watching a diplomatic crisis unfold in the Middle East between two Muslim powers. And the situation is growing increasingly more tense. Protests are spreading around the globe. Saudi Arabia has expelled Iranian diplomats from that country and cut entirely diplomatic ties with Iran. The crisis was sparked by a divide between Sunni-dominated Saudis and the Shia-dominated Iran. Saudi Arabia executed a prominent Shiite cleric who had spoken out repeatedly against the Saudi royal family and the government. He was part of the largest mass execution in three and a half decades. 47 people killed. Earlier Sunday, Iranian protesters, furious over the deaths, set fire to the Saudi embassy in Tehran. Holly Williams has more on the tinderbox that's developing in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia's execution of Nimr al Nimr has inflamed a centuries old conflict between Sunni and Shiite Muslims. Saudi Arabia severed diplomatic ties with Shiite-dominated Iran on Sunday after an irate mob ransacked the Saudi Arabian embassy in the Iranian capital, Tehran. Oh, 42 people were later arrested, though Iran has now also named the street in honor of Nima al Nima. <laughs> The country's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, said that Saudi Arabia will face divine revenge. In Indian Kashmir, police used tear gas and rubber bullets against an angry crowd protesting the killing of the Shiite cleric. In Lebanon, protesters also targeted the Saudi embassy, heavily guarded by the army and police. Saudi Arabia is ruled by a Sunni Muslim monarchy. Nima al Nima demanded equality for Shiites and called for peaceful protests during the Arab Spring. He was shot and arrested in 2012 and sentenced to death two years later for crimes including disobeying Saudi Arabia's rulers. The U.S. says it's worried the execution of Nima al Nima will exacerbate religious tensions. But Saudi Arabia is unrepentant and says al Nima, along with the 46 other people it executed on Saturday, was put to death in accordance with Islamic law. Contessa. For more, we're joined via Skype by Aaron David Miller. He's a Midi scholar at the Woodrow Wilson Center. It's good to see you today, Aaron. What are the consequences here of Saudi Arabia expelling Iranian diplomats, cutting off diplomatic ties with Iran? Well, I think it's the latest shoot a drop in what has been an ongoing Cold War between Iran and Saudi Arabia for a number of years now. I mean, fueled by differences over Iraq, Syria, the nuclear issue. The Saudis, I think, in executing these 47 individuals, particularly uh, the killing of uh, Sheikh Nimr al Nimr, sent an unmistakable message both to Shia, Shia dissidents uh, within Saudi Arabia and to any external challengers that the Saudis will brook no uh, opposition, no dissent, and are willing to take dramatic uh, uh, action, including uh, the, the, these beheadings, uh, of anyone associated with challenging the kingdom. And I think this, this essentially will trigger uh, uh, an Iranian reaction. You saw it yesterday uh, with the ransacking and torturing, torturing of part of the Saudi embassy in Tehran, and you, you've seen it again today with the Saudi severing relations. Whether this could actually go to armed confrontations, probably unlikely, but uh, under the circumstances, I wouldn't ru rule out some incident somewhere uh, as a consequence of, um, of this new dynamic. The Iranian government has said that the torching of the Saudi embassy was illegal. They call it a criminal act. They um, have strongly denounced it and said that those who were responsible are going to be punished. But in the meantime, about those executions in Saudi Arabia, those, the Saudi government says that they were all linked with terrorism. The UN Human Rights Commissioner, who's a Jordanian prince, has said that it's a disturbing development in part because of those, some of those death sentences um, were, were executing people who were convicted of nonviolent crimes. And yet the United States has been notably 
uh, silent in, in terms of being outspoken. The only thing that the deputy NSA um, director, advisor said, Ben Rhodes, is that the United States has been complaining for years about Saudi human rights. Does the United States need to take a bigger stand? It is notable. In fact, it's quite stunning that the administration reaction has been uh, so low key. But again, you know, Saudi Arabia uh, is a uh, an ally, at least in limited sense, in the war against the Islamic State. We're going to need the Saudi the Saudis if we're ever going to figure out a way to end the S Syrian civil war. Uh, we're going to need them probably in Iraq uh, a a as well. And, and the price of that necessity is is to adopt a, an approach, not just with the Saudis, um, w w with other governments as well, uh, that will essentially put what uh, the administration or the previous administrations regarded as their interests above their values. So you have two regional powers here, uh, one Sunni, one Shiite, at odds. Yes. What's, what's the worst case scenario and how do you avoid it? Well, I think the worst case scenario would be uh, a, a major confrontation, a regional war. I, I don't think that's in the cards. Um, the, the upshot of this will be longer term, I suspect. And that is to say, as long as this Iranian uh, Saudi hot or cold war continues, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult for the United States to continue to prosecute its military and political campaign against the Islamic State. It's going to be nearly impossible to create any kind of diplomatic process which was always a, a, a long shot. To put the Syrian Humpty Dumpty back together again, it's going to be difficult to end the, um, uh, the war in Yemen, which will continue to see uh, uh, large numbers of casualties. And the Middle East will revert to its form, which is bro broken or continue to demonstrate its form, which is broken, angry, and, uh, and a dysfunctional part of the world. The problem for the United States is that we are stuck in the middle of this. We cannot fix or transform this region, and we cannot leave it. And therein lies the real dilemma or conundrum for the superpower. And nobody, uh, at least so far, certainly not this administration, has come up with a, uh, a, a way to resolve that. And I suspect no matter whether it's an R or a D in 2017 or a he or a she, the same problems that you're witnessing now will continue to challenge the next administration as well. Aaron David Miller uh, from the Woodrow Wilson Center. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure.